Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Dear brothers and sisters in Islam This is your brother Saad Haider from U of M Dearborn MSA coming with you with a Friday reminder and today I wanted to discuss with you the topic of redemption in Islam that of repentance and sin Prasallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Az-Zumar ayah 53 Awud bin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rajim Qul ya ibadi alladhina asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah inna Allah yaghfir dhunuba jamiya inna huwa ghafur rahim Say O oh, servants of mine who have acted recklessly against themselves do not despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the any sort of sins and surely he is such that he is most forgiving most merciful. The Surah Al-Zumar, this ayah here, it explains that to us that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is such that He will forgive for any kind of sin that we do, as long as we make the tawbah to Him, and that we should not be despair of His mercy. And furthermore, we should understand that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is such that He will forgive any sin outside of shirk. For shirk is the only sin, the sin of associating partners with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That is the only sin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive unless the, uh, somebody makes the proper repentance for that. And as long as that person makes the proper repentance, even that sort of person who has committed shirk can be forgiven. It is like forgiveness is our main weapon against the shaitan. For whenever shaitan tries to dissuade us from doing that what is good, uh, is that we, all we have to do is make toba whenever we make these sins that the shaitan makes us slip into and everything is wiped away. It is as if we have not done the sin. And it, therefore, it is like the one thing that the shaitan does not want us ever doing or thinking about. And I want to talk about a few stor uh, stories on this matter of forgiveness, and including the ever-famous story of the man who had killed 100 people. Everyone knows of this story. It is a very well-known uh, uh, hadith that, that has been narrated. And the story goes that a man who had killed 99 persons and remember that killing a person is like as if you have killed the entirety of humanity SubhanAllah And this person, he has killed 99 people And he goes to this monk This monk is a learned person on, on the matters of faith And he tells this monk I have killed 99 people in my life Am I able to be forgiven? And the monk he says No How are you to be forgiven for this? This is 99 people you have killed 99 people and you, you think you can be forgiven for this? Of course not. Such a thing is astaghfirullah, you have done too much and this person cannot take this. He, out of his anger, kills this person as well. And so this is the 100th person that he has killed. 100 people to his name that he has killed. SubhanAllah. And yet, a flame still flickers within this person. This hope that he can be still for, be forgiven, even though 100 men has died by his hand, and so he decides to go on and ask another person. And this person is a pious person, he has strong um, foundation in faith. And he asks this person, I have killed 100 people, can I be forgiven? It's a very profound statement you have to realize. If you were to be told uh, uh, by somebody, I have killed this many people, even if you were to be told something like, I have lied to this person, or I've cheated this person, or so on and so forth, would, how would you react? You would probably be like, this is a, a terrible sin, how could you have done this? And this pious person, he has, has this interesting reaction to this person. He tells this person, of course you can be forgiven. Of course you can be forgiven. This, this, you may have killed 100 people, but you can still be forgiven. However, I'm noticing something about you that you seem to be coming from this village of people. And these people are bad people. They are of terrible company. I suggest that you go to this other village. And there in that other village, you will find people who are righteous, people who will strive to do the right thing. And you will find in their company such a goodness that it will um, help you become a better person yourself. And this person, he takes his advice to heart. He goes to that village and he takes on the journey of traveling to this person, hoping for repentance for his sins. And along the way, he dies. It is such a sudden death that happens that he was on the road and then suddenly he just dies there on the spot. This person is now dead on the road and the angels come down, both the angels of mercy and the angels of punishment. And they start debating, who is this, per who is this person who, who they're going to take? Is it going to be the mer angels of mercy who take him or is it going to be the angels of punishment? For he is a sinner, yes, he's he killed 100 people, the angels of punishment, they argued. He has killed all these people, but the angels of mercy, they argued, no, this person has made Toba. 
He has repented to Allah He is going to these people who are good and leaving these people who are bad. Surely he can be forgiven and taken into Jannah. And so Allah made it such that they would settle this dispute by measuring the distance between the two towns and this person. And whichever town that person was closer to, this would be what would decide his fate. The closer the town, if it was that of the, those who were good, he would be forgiven. But if he was those who had sinned, then khalas, he was up amongst those who go to Jahannam. And they make this measurement and <laughs> this is an amazing moment. First, uh, if you realize, Allah SWT, some narrations actually state that Allah SWT, He actually brings this person closer to the, the village that is of piety. And when the angels measure, all, they find either way, however the story goes, that this person is closer to the village of those who are good. SubhanAllah, like, but this, he, this person ends up going to Jannah and that is how this, this tale concludes. And we can derive a lot of lessons out of this. For example, that no sin, no sin that we have done, even if it is such that it's like a hundred ki uh, killings that you've done, these are not too big for Allah Taala's mercy, which is greater than th these sins. No matter what kind of evil you have done, Allah Taala, as long as you turn back to Him, He will wipe it all away, like that. And it is easy for Him. He, it does not matter what how bad your sin is, and the person who did these all these killings, that forgiveness was it. That's all it needed for him to be saved. Although there was another thing he had done that helped him with his repentance and that, he's ma that he made the effort towards being good. For remember, when we make an effort to doing something good, it helps um, make sin put sincerity into it. And when for making forgiveness, the one thing that you should always do is follow up with something good to wipe it away. And that is what this person did. He made his Tawbah sincere by deciding, I'm going to leave off these evils I'm doing by going to these people, these people who happen to be good, and I will, that way I will become a better person. And mashallah, that alone helped him, saved him from the, the punishment of the, of the fire. And we also learn another thing, that when we put ourselves in a good company, like this person decided to do, put himself in the company of good people and leaving off the bad people he had used to be accustomed to, that also is something that is good for us. Now there's something we need to think about here about the story that when we talk about the monk and the pious men who were in the story, the, there's a huge contrast between these two. The monk, when he spoke with this person who had killed all these people, he said, no, there will be no chance of you being forgiven for this. This is too many sins. And the pious person, meanwhile, he had hope for this person. He saw this person as someone who could be redeemed and told him, yes, you can be forgiven for this. Subhanallah, bihamdik, ashadu la ilaha illa ant, astaghfirullah wa alaikum 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 wa alaikum